The Honourable Member for Nanaimo, Ladysmith. There should be no question about what we need to do to advance childcare in Canada. We need a universal childcare system that is national so all families have equal access, affordable and with quality care. It's the smart, responsible thing to do. The cost of childcare in large cities rose almost 10% in the last two years, sometimes as high as $1,700. My sister paid more for childcare than for rent. Canadian families need action now. There's no doubt childcare is essential to getting women into the workforce. Pierre Fortin, professor of economics at Université du Québec à Montréal, told the Status of Women Committee last month the Quebec child care system increased the number of women in the workforce by 70,000. 70,000. That was in 2008. In my riding, women's groups, student unions, and community child care centers all agree accessible and affordable child care is absolutely necessary so that women can go to work, attend school, and live in safety. As Supreme Court Justice Rosalie Abella said, Quote, child care is the ramp that provides equal access to the workforce for mothers, end quote. And now, if that weren't reason enough, universal child care is good for the economy. Professor Fortin studied the Quebec child care model and concluded that there is no net cost to taxpayers. In fact, he calculated that in 2008, the provincial and federal governments got a surplus of $900 million from the universal child care program in Quebec. The economic benefits of universal childcare could be felt in other provinces too. Economist Robert Fairholm predicts that the $10 a day childcare program proposed by the BC NDP in this current election uh, would create 96, sorry, would create 69,000 jobs and will make enough revenue for the government to build and operate the childcare system. Investing in childcare will also create good jobs for those who work in the childcare sector. Last week, I heard from daycare operators in my riding that they cannot pay the early childcare educators what they need to make a good wage. And that's unjust to the women educating our children and means that they often have to leave the field, which is disruptive to children in their care. Parents can't afford to pay childcare fees that are any higher. So the government must act to invest in a system with fair wages for early, early childhood educators. Now, if the federal government is unsure about what action on childcare should look like, the Liberals can look to these models that are already existing in Canada. In Quebec, the universal system of low-fee childcare is a real success, providing quality care for children and helping women get back to work. My province of BC used to have a universal provincial child care system. Um, it was cancelled by the BC Liberals when they first took office in 2001. But the prediction now um, that uh, the BC NDP has pledged $10 a day child care uh, would have real economic benefit. And this week, the Alberta NDP government launched its $25 a day child care, which parents and working mothers say is just what's needed to balance child care costs and work. So access to affordable child care is what is needed to lift people out of poverty and to make sure that women can get to work. It's time that the government takes leadership on child care. So why is the government not keeping its child care promise to Canadian children, women and families? The Honourable Secretary Parliamentary. Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister for Immigration. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All member uh, for uh, Nanaimo Lady Smith for raising in the House the important question uh, of child care in Canada and particularly the high cost in certain uh, regions. Mr. Speaker, studies show that affordability and quality of child care services influence parents' labour market participation and child development. I'm sure that my colleague is perfectly aware of the efforts that our government has invested in and will continue to invest in to help the middle class and those working hard to join it. Allow me to remind her of some of these measures. First of all, Let's settle the issue of the Canada Child Benefit. On December 12, 
In her question to the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, my colleague claimed that the value of the Canada Child Benefit would decrease by 2021, that our government wasn't keeping its promises and that it had let our children fall through the cracks. But, Mr. Speaker, nothing could be further from the truth. Moreover, to respond to her question, the minister took the time to point out that the new Canada Child Benefit would allow half a million Canadians to finally get out of poverty. He also reminded her of our recent announcement that this child benefit would be indexed starting in 2020-2021 to guarantee that the real value of benefits paid to Canadians would not be devalued in the long term by the rate of inflation. As for child care services, the Minister also reminded her that in the coming months we will be launching a new early learning and child care framework to answer the questions of affordability and quality of child care services. In Budget 2017, we propose to invest $7 billion over 10 years starting in 2018-19 to support and create more high-quality, flexible, fully inclusive and affordable child care spaces across the country. A portion of this investment will be dedicated to improving access to culturally appropriate early learning and child care programs for Indigenous children living on and off reserve. Over the next three years, these investments could increase the number of affordable child care spaces for low and modest income families by supporting up to 40,000 new subsidized child care spaces and make it more affordable for parents to return to work with thousands of parents more likely to enter the labor force once child care is made more affordable. Of this investment, $95 million will also go towards closing data gaps to better understand what child care looks like. And $100 million will go toward early learning and child care innovation. These investments are in addition to the initial investment of $500 million in Budget 2016 for early learning and child care, including $100 million for Indigenous early learning and child care. We've already begun discussions with the provinces and territories to develop this framework. Moreover, we will work with Indigenous partners to develop a distinct Indigenous framework on early learning and child care that will reflect the unique cultures and needs of First Nation, Inuit, and Métis children and families across Canada. We will work in cooperation with provinces, territory, and Indigenous partners to provide the help to families in most need. And it is important to note that once they are in place, the framework will offer all the necessary flexibility to support Canadian families to have access to affordable, high quality and trusty inclusive childcare, regardless of where they are they live in Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the member opposite you know, articulates a good vision, a good, you know, I think the intentions of the government are good, but as with so many things, we're not seeing the action associated with them. Uh, increasing the, the child benefit doesn't help parents unless you have created more childcare spaces in which to spend that money. And this is our big disappointment. There has been no action to tackle the out of control childcare costs. There has been no action to create new childcare spaces. This year's and last year's budget had no money allocated, zero allocated to create new childcare spaces. The 2017 budget of last month um, also fell far short of the international standard of 1% of GDP spent on childcare. Oxfam Canada and the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives are just two of the groups that called the alarm on that. Now, as Morna Ballantyne from the um, childcare. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, I do acknowledge that the member has this subject at heart. I have two young children myself and I know how much families need these services. But I would like to remind my colleague that the new Canada Child Benefit will help get nearly 300,000 children out of poverty by the end of 2017, which is a 40 percent reduction in the level of poverty in Canada. Nine out of ten families receive more benefits than under the old system. 
develop an early learning and child care framework that I'm sure will fully address my colleague's concern, Mr. Speaker. So uh, again, I thank her for uh, her work on this file, and I can assure you that the Government of Canada is taking this uh, subject very, very, uh, uh, very, very importantly for all the Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.